Welcome back. In this video, we've been given a group, G, which consists of eight elements. E, R, R squared, R cubed. Then you have this element S, and then products of S with the R's. And the assumption here is that if you take R to the fourth power, you get the identity. So that means that R is going to have order four, because all the other powers of R are different. Uh, and uh, also S squared. Right? This side, S squared is equal to the identity. And then you have this relationship which tells you how to pass an S through an R. So if I have S times R, I can move it to the other side, but then the R turns into an R cubed. So this relationship right here, this actually tells you G is non-abelian. Okay. Then we have a subgroup generated by R squared and S. So this will have the identity, of course. It'll have R squared and S. And then it needs to have their product, which is R squared S. The reason why we don't need any more elements is because R squared has order 2, because R to the fourth is E, and S has order 2, and their product, R squared S, also has order 2. Okay. So this gives you a subgroup of order 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then there's going to be another subgroup, but we won't need that for the first two problems that we'll cover in this video. So the first question is, how do you know that H is a normal subgroup of G? Well, we know that the order of H is equal to 4. We know that the order of G is equal to 8. Well, 4 is half of 8. And we have a theorem in class which tells us if the index of H and G is equal to 2, and remember the index for finite groups is equal to the quotient of their orders, then H is a normal subgroup of G. All right, so that's how we immediately know. We don't have to check cosets or anything. We just notice it has index 2. We're done. All right, so that's A. How about B? Well, B says we want to find all the elements of the quotient group G mod H. Well, once we know H is normal, then we actually know G mod H is a group. Excellent. So we have this quotient group, and we want to find all the elements of it. So first thing, by Lagrange's theorem, the number of elements in the quotient group is just equal to the index. So the size of G mod H is equal to the index of G mod H, which is equal to 2. So this will be a group with just two elements. Now what do elements in a quotient group look like? Well, they look like cosets. So G mod H, just in general, you would write down, this is all left cosets of H. Now there are eight elements of G, so in principle I could write down eight of these things. But we only need to write down two, right? Because that's actually the order of the group. That means there's going to be a lot of repeats. And the way we know when there are repeats is as follows. We had a result in class which said that if you take elements A and B and look at the cosets, they're going to give you the same coset if and only if B was already in AH. So what that means is if I write down all the elements of AH, then all of those different elements are going to give you the same coset. So let me give you an example. So here, if I take the identity times our H, and we'll, we'll actually use our H from up above. So our H will be E R squared S and R squared S. So let's, let's write that on the side. E R squared S and R squared S. Okay, well, EH, that's actually just going to be the same thing as H. So it'll be E R squared S and R squared S. And what this result above tells us is that R squared H and SH and R squared SH all have to equal EH. So I don't need to write down all four of these. I just need one of them when I try to write down G mod H. Now, if I want to get the other element of G mod H, I'm going to have to take a coset which doesn't use one of those as the representatives. Okay, so the first one I can think of is how about RH? So RH, that's going to equal R times E, which is R, R times R squared, which is R cubed, R times S, and R times R squared S, which will be R cubed S. 
Okay, and we can see there's no intersection, right? No intersection between these two cosets. We get all eight elements of the group. So in fact, our G is a disjoint union of EH and RH, which is what we expect. And so if I want to write down my set of cosets, I can just write it down as EH and RH. Of course, it would have been just as legitimate to write down R squared H and R cubed SH. Because the R squared H, that's coming from this first uh, set, and the R cubed S, well, that's coming from the second one. All right. That's how we can find our cosets.